Well, welcome to my next top 10, and by God, this cold is kicking my backside. But I shall churn on. Now, this top 10 has given me the biggest headache so far um, from any of the top 10s. Um, it really has. Um, it's been... In fact, I'm still not 100% sure... I'm sure. But I'll put my top 10 out up to now, okay? Um, so in 10th place, okay, from the turn of the century, um, I did want to score him higher, but looking at all looking at all the information, um, I've decided to put him 10th for now. That is the demon Barbados Walcott. Of course, it was lineal welterweight champion in the early 1900s when he destroyed Rube Ferns. And also for a talented list of fighters, you know, from Dixie Kid to Honey Melody to Joe Gans to Dave Holly. To young Peter Jackson, um, a prior welterweight shot, of course, earlier than that against um, the capable, mysterious Billy Smith. Just a whole set of top fighters he fought. Um, he did hold the lineal welterweight title for some time. Um, just not the longevity there for me. And also, I'm not going to explain it, but just some things that made me decide to put him at number 10. So the Barbados Demon um, comes in at number 10. So, in ninth place, okay, another major headache I had. You see, I don't rate on style, um, but I still wanted to put him higher, but I had to settle in ninth place, okay, for Sugar Ray Leonard, who, of course, scored those great wins over Benitez, Duran and Hearns, and had the great loss to uh, Duran, which is almost a win in itself for what it did for his reputation for the great battle it was. Um, but I ended up putting Sugar Ray Leonard ninth, um, like I say, I don't rate it on style because it's all fantasy matchup land. Um, so ultimately, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, he, he won the title against Benitez, a tough fight. You know, won a, uh, lost and won to Duran, beat Thomas Hearns, of course, in a great fight. And of course, it was Sugar Ray Leonard who was partly responsible with Roberto Duran in 1982 for getting me involved in the sport in the first place. So big shout out to Ray Leonard and Duran for that. So Sugar Ray Leonard comes in ninth place. You know, the retirements, the lack of real longevity uh, may have hurt him a little bit. Like I say, I don't have to explain myself. This is just my top ten, my basic top ten. So Sugar Ray Leonard goes in ninth, but I'm still looming an hour in. Now, in eighth place is a fighter who was rated at middleweight. Okay, now this is the um, lineal undisputed welterweight champion from 22 until uh, 1926. Um, you know, after beating the great boxing marvel Jack Britton, he also fought a whole host um, of other top fighters around that time, you know, from Pete Lasso, who would not only fight at Welter, but end up at light heavyweight, you know, to the great Southpaw Lou Tendler, you know, to the very, very capable and dangerous um, welterweight and middleweight contender Dave Shade. Um, the toy bulldog Mickey Walker was uh, the lineal welterweight champion for a number of years prior to going up, of course, and winning um, the lineal undisputed middleweight title from Theodore Tiger. Of flowers, the deacon from Georgia. Um, but Mickey Walker was a great welterweight, ferociously phys physically strong welterweight, um, and fought a lot of good fighters and reigned as king of the division um, for a number of years. So Mickey Walker goes in eighth place. Now I have to admit, the next two, I have been going this way, then that way, this way, then that way, this way, then that way. But for now, in seventh place, I'll put Mantequila, okay, the great Jose Napolis who emerged as one of the most dominant welterweight champions of all time in length of reign. Um, also, from my video on his career on my welterweight playlist, you can see um, that he had a fantastic career, Jose Napolese. Um, Jose Napolese comes in seventh place and was certainly um, one of the best boxers um, on this countdown. And he's I always say that Jose Napolese, like Sugar Ray Leonard, is one of those welterweights who could have fought in any era and done very well. And, you know, to me, being... A top 10 fighter in any division show that is, you know, part of the criteria. Are they transcendent from their era to other eras? Jose Napolis comes in 7th place. Um, I've argued back and forth on him with the fighter in 6th place. But Mantequila deserves his respect with a top 10 finish, no doubt. Uh, made lots of title defences, had lots of title fights. Even forayed up to challenge the great middleweight King Carlos Monzon, which was a fantastic display by Monzon. Now, arguing him back and forth with the Cuban Hawk Kid Gavilan, who I think potentially could hold the title of being the greatest Cuban fighter of all time. Yes, there's many great Cuban fighters, but Kid Gavilan 
had a super CV, okay? He gave Sugar Ray Robinson a stiff test, you know, in a non-title fight, then a title fight. The thing is, when Sugar Ray Robinson left the division to campaign full-time at middleweight after beating a whole number of rated middleweights in non-title fights in between welterweight defences, um, Kid Gavilan from 1951 to 1954 emerged as the top dog. And he has a great resume in there. If you go check his video out on my welterweight playlist, outstanding resume full of names like Bobby Dykes, the underrated contender Bobby Dykes, the underrated Billy Graham and fighters like, of course, Carmen Basilio, former champion Johnny Bratton. Kid Gavilan not only gave Sugar Ray Robinson great fights, he emerged as the king following Robinson and has a great resume as well and had a lot of title fights. So Gavilan for the moment in number six. In number five, I put a UK fighter, the great Ted Kid Lewis, who despite fighting from pretty much flyweight to heavyweight, um, also stopped off to build a sizable welterweight resume, including being two-time lineal undisputed welterweight champion of the world, of course, swapping um, with another great welterweight. Ted Kid Lewis, you know, is a great welterweight because not only did he fight one of the best fight series at welterweight um, against a fellow top Hall of Famer in his division, um, but he twice held that title, had lots of title fights, um, eventually left to go to middleweight and beyond, but did do a sizable amount of work at middleweight. You know, very few fighters, even on this list, have been a two-time undisputed welterweight champion. So Ted Kid Lewis comes in fifth place overall. Now, in fourth place, okay, is a fighter that I really, really rate much higher than a lot of people. I've heard people say, this guy didn't fight anybody. Um, what a ridiculous statement. This is what I mean about YouTube. What a ridiculous statement. You know, the great Emil Griffith, okay, the six-time lineal champion, three-weight champion, was a three-time undisputed welterweight champion who had lots of world welterweight title fights from the world welterweight era flipping into the WBC, WBA. Now, Emil Griffith as a three-time champion also fought lots of great fights down there. Of course, he had the trilogy ending with a tragedy in the brutal fight series with Benny Kid Perret. He also had a fight run, okay, with very underrated Hall of Famer Luis Rodriguez, um, beating, losing once, but regaining his welterweight title, beating Rodriguez a number of times. And Emil Griffith does have an outstanding welterweight run, um, including that three-time lineal, three-time undisputed welterweight hall, which, again, is a feat that very few um, at welterweight can match. And he really does have a good resume, not only from the Hall of Fame as he fought in the title fights, but many of the top contenders he fought. He really does have a thick one. Check out his video on my welterweight playlist. It's staggering, his resume. In third place, though, is... The boxing marvel Jack Britton, the great rival at welterweight of Ted Kid Lewis, whom, between him and Lewis, swapped the world welterweight lineal undisputed title between themselves and had a massive fight series. The fight series that, if I could choose from all boxing history, aside from the Langford Jeanette fights, um, etc. like that, I would go for the Jack Britton Ted Kid Lewis. If I could get every fight in HD, that is the fight series I would watch. You know, the measured, calm boxing master Jack Britton against the very educated pressure um, and mental, um, um, mental, how can I put it? Yeah, the mental um, strain he put you under from Ted Kid Lewis with that controlled aggression, that controlled pressure. I bet them fights were outstanding. But Jack Britton, three-time lineal undisputed welterweight champion, over 30 welterweight title fights, a massive fight from Ted Kid Lewis, and fought many of the other best welterweights of his time. Jack Britton's an outstanding ATG in my book and gets third. Now, the top two I was arguing as well. Okay, in two, number two, I elected to put Henry Armstrong, okay, the record holding defence holder at 19. And a fighter who came to the division from lightweight, you know, def, uh, from featherweight, sorry, defeated um, the great Barney Ross, a three time champion who's beat a whole list of Hall of Famers, gave him an absolute beating. Then, also in his, his early defences, beat then top contender Seferino Garcia. This would even before Garcia fought Armstrong at middleweight. And, you know, then went on a run fighting so many top fighters, fighting Sugar Ray Robinson, losing to Fritz Zivic twice, twice um, fighting Willie George. Just an enormous amount of fights this guy had um, against the top welterweights and um, set that record 
defence run of 19 defences at welterweight, which has stood like 80 years and has never been beaten. Uh, that is a record. Even Trinidad couldn't beat it. Um, so that record may stand for another century. Who knows? But the number one I elected to go for doesn't have the title, long title fight record at welterweight um, of Henry Armstrong, but he does have a great welterweight resume. You know, whether it's beating, you know, Sammy, Sammy Ango, who kind of beat a lightweight, but he beat Marty Servo twice. Um, he was unbeaten when Robinson first fought him. Servo was a tough, experienced fighter. You know, fighting Izzy Janazos, fighting all these other guys, Fritzy Zivic, Henry Armstrong. You know, becoming having to wait like six years for a welterweight title shot and then being absolutely imperious to the point that, you know, he was undefeated, undisputed, lineal welterweight champion, never lost that title in a ring, ended up going to middleweight and being replaced by Gavilan as the next kind of dominant welterweight. But to me, at the moment, I would put Sugar Ray Robinson number one. Um... This has been the toughest top 10 for me. You know, Napoli's and Gavilan are interchangeable. Um, I've argued about Sugar Ray Leonard's place. I've argued about Armstrong Robinson. But this is the initial 10 I have put out for now. There's the welterweights. I'll be back with lightweights soon.